In this video, I will share with you the seven tools that I use the most in my job as a senior rec developer, while also showing you what a realistic workday might look like. The tools that I'm going to show you in this video are really fundamental to my success as a developer, as well as the success of the team and the project that I'm contributed to, which is very important. And the whole goal for this video is to hopefully make you a better developer. So let's get into it. So first of all, this video isn't going to be a day in the life video. I'm not going to show you how I brush my teeth or what I eat for breakfast. I'm not interested in that, to be honest. Instead, I will show you what I do on my computer during my day as a senior React engineer, because really, that's where the magic happens. Also, this video is kindly sponsored by Pulpo, and we'll be seeing them and their Slack slash GitHub integration tool throughout this video. So the first tool that I use in my workday is the browser. So in the morning, I'll wake up, I'll get to work in my workstation. I work from home, so the commute is usually very short. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll open up my browser to catch up on everything and see if there's any fires that I need to put out. Now, the browser that I use is not Chrome or any other typical browser that you might be used to. It's actually a new browser that got released semi-recently, which is called the Arc Browser. So the Arc Browser is a browser that tries to redefine what it actually means to browse the web. And it has a lot of cool features that you don't see in other traditional browsers like Chrome, for example. For example, you have the sidebar over here, which kind of tries to redefine what bookmarks and tabs should be and how they should function. So this one is split into two vertically. There's this little line that kind of splits them into two. And over here at the top, this section, these are your permanent tabs. These are like your traditional bookmarks. You can put in here anything that you want to have permanently, and they're always going to show up here and you can access them super easily. But then everything below this line is ephemeral. For example, I have this link over here. This is the official Arc Browser website. All of these links over here will disappear after 24 hours or after a set amount of hours that you can configure. But then you also have other features. You can organize things into folders. For example, here I have a to-do folder, which I created, and I put in here usually all the things that I need to work on in the next day or the day that I'm currently working at. So over here, I have two links. I have auth flow designs. This is a Figma link. We're gonna see this later in the video. And I also have here a GitHub pull request that I have to review. These are things that I have to do, and I put them here so I can easily access them, do them today. And once I'm done, I can just press the X over here, clear my to-do folder, and get ready for a new workday. Right, so for me, using this browser makes sense. It increases my productivity. And like I said, I don't see myself changing to another browser anytime soon. The second tool that I'm going to use in my React developer work team is Slack. So Slack, as you can see here, is a chat app that is very similar to Discord, but more focused on professionals. You can join different workspaces. For example, here you can see the Cause and Solutions logo. We're inside of the Cause and Solutions logo, and you can have all of your team members joined as part of this workspace. You can then talk to your team via direct message. For example, we have Ian over here. We can talk to Ian, send him a message just like you would. And you also have these channels over here like Dev, General, Product, and Random, and you can completely configure figure this as you want, and you can have them specifically for each workspace. Now, let me show you something that's really cool. So over here, we have another channel that I haven't talked about. As you can see here, I actually have a notification. There's something for me to do inside of this channel. This is a private channel. As you can see here, we have this icon here, this lock icon indicating it's a private channel. And this is a PR channel, and it comes directly from Pulpo. This is actually the same PR pull request that's in my to-do folder inside of my Arc browser. So over here, we have the to-do folder. We have added users page. This is a GitHub link. This is actually a pull request that I have to review, and it's in my to-do folder because I have to do this today. Now, the cool thing about Pulpo and one of its main features really is the fact that I have the same exact pull request as a channel inside of my Slack app, and this is really useful. And actually, Pulpo is the third tool that I'm going to use in my React software developer workday. So Pulpo essentially is a Slack tool that integrates directly with GitHub. So one of the most common problems in product teams whenever you're working with multiple people is keeping track of everything that has to be done during the workday. For example, in my case, reviewing pull requests. So the thing is, what often happens to me and to the rest of my team and also generally to most developers is that pull requests get stale very frequently. So for example, we have Ian over here. He works on something, he writes some code, he then pushes up that code in a separate branch, creates a pull request like we have here, assigns me as the reviewer. And although I might see the notification initially, I may be doing something else in the moment and I don't have time to review it then. And then unfortunately, I might forget, which honestly happens so often. There's so many pull requests that just get forgotten. And eventually when they get reviewed, the actual owner, Ian, who actually did this work, will have lost all of the context about the work that he actually did. But because I'm using Pulpo, we actually get this pull request over here. So I can open up this channel. I'm tagged in here and I can directly see it in Slack, which is my chat app. And the thing is, I'm much more likely to see it and do something with it because I check my Slack, my chat app, much more often than I do check my 
GitHub. And you can see what this channel looks like. So first of all, this is private, right? So only me and Ian in this case, because he's tagged me as the reviewer, get to see it. If we tag somebody else, they will also get automatically added to this channel. And then we can see the same information that we have on GitHub. So we have over here, we have a new pull request. We have some data over here. This comes from actually the GitHub actions that I have set up on the repository. And also a really cool feature from Pulpo specifically is they give you right away an AI summary of this actual pull request. So you can see at a glance before even looking at the code, what the pull request is about get some context and then go into the review with this context. This is really useful. And then if I go back to GitHub, you're going to see that we have exactly the same information over here. So Pulpo is directly integrated into this repository and is going to run all of this code here. And I can actually see the same review, the same AI generated review over here and actually get the same context. So it doesn't matter if I want to look at it on Slack or on GitHub, I get the same information. But that's not even the coolest part. Let me show you something else. Let's now say that we were actually going to review this pull request, which we are, right? So let's go here to files change and let's see what actually changes inside of this pull request. So we have only three files changed. This is obviously a simple pull request, but let's say that I don't like the work that he did here. I don't like this part over here and I'm going to leave a comment. I can select these lines over here and I can just leave a comment and I can say, this should be a separate component right? Let's just add a single comment to keep things simple. I put this comment directly on GitHub. Now, if I go back to Slack, we actually have the same comment directly put here inside of the PR channel inside of Slack. This should be a separate component. And it also knows who I am. Darius started a new code review thread on these specific lines of code. So it gets the lines of code as well. And it says exactly what I wrote. This is really useful because now this comment is visible by anybody in Slack. We can add anybody to this channel and anyone can have context, even if they're not a developer. If you've ever worked in a team, you know how non-developers feel about GitHub. They get lost. Can you really expect a non-developer to actually go in here inside of a code review and look at actual code and then participate in this comment? No, but you can expect them to go inside of Slack because Slack is a chat app that's not only meant for developers. And actually this works both ways. So here I can come here and create a reply inside of a thread and I can maybe suggest a name for this component, right? We said this should be a separate component. Let's actually suggest a name, maybe name be name it users list and then send this over here. The cool thing is now this comment is also going to go back to GitHub and also be visible there. So as you can see, I actually refreshed the page and you can see my comment over here from me as well, directly on GitHub, maybe name it users list. This is really, really cool right? Like I don't have to specifically go to GitHub to put a comment. I don't have to necessarily go to Slack. I can do it in any way that I want. And this significantly reduces the chances that I'm going to miss something inside of this pull request and significantly increases the chances that this pull request is going to get reviewed and merged as soon as possible. Now, Pulpo actually has a lot more functionality that's really designed to reduce the time that it takes to actually get a PR reviewed and merged, right? So for example, they'll actually remind you inside of Slack, they'll send you a reminder if it's been too long since a pull request has had any activity which is probably what you want, right? In case you forgot, it's going to send you a reminder and everyone's going to be reminded that, hey, we have this pull request and we actually need to take care of it. We need to merge it, right? So this makes a lot of sense and greatly improves the team productivity. So now that we've done this, we actually gave Ian some feedback on his pull request. Let's give him some time to actually get the work done and we're going to come back to him and Pulpo a little bit later. Now, something that I want you to know and to expect is that as a software developer, especially the more senior you get, you don't actually get to spend the entire day coding. I've actually spent this entire morning so far just looking at emails, looking at my browser and reviewing code. I haven't even opened my editor at all. That's totally normal in a realistic workday. There's so much more to building a product than just the code that goes into it. Sure, the code is important. Of course it is. That's why we're software developers, but everything around it also is. And as a senior developer, it's your responsibility to manage all of that. But when I do code, I like to use VS Code as my main editor, which is the fourth tool that I use. I went through a few other editors in the past, such as Notepad++, Sublime Text, Atom, and even NeoVim, but I finally decided on VS Code. For me, it has the right balance of features and flexibility. I'm not going to go too deep inside of my VS Code setup because I do have a whole video where I did go through that, but I'm going to show you a little bit just how I like to work with it and the things that make my life a little bit easier. So first, I like to keep my sidebar over here. This one, I like to keep it on the right. In the past, I used to have it in the left, but it just makes so much more sense in the right because your text is left aligned and it just feels more natural. I also usually only have one file open, so I tend to not do the whole putting this on a side and over here and have two files. I just find this is a little bit too distracting. I like to have 
this over here and I can quickly navigate between the tabs using my keyboard mostly and I can get the work done a little bit faster and it just feels better for myself personally. If I want to open up a file, I use command P or control P on Windows and then cycle with the arrow keys and open any file that I want like this one, for example. And then I also have shortcuts for command one, two, three, four, five, and so on to actually easily navigate these files. And this makes me be as fast as I can. Obviously, I also use the Vim key bindings, as you can see over here. It just makes my life a lot easier and I can be a little bit faster, which I like. And everything else is pretty much standard. I don't have too many extensions. I don't have too many special configurations. My goal is to be as fast as possible, to have as little friction as possible, and to just get the job done. That's all that I want. Now, let's talk about terminals. So when it comes to terminals, I'll usually use two different types of terminals. If I'm doing something simple, like just running the application, I'm going to open up the VS Code terminal and then do pnpm dev and then run the application that way and it's sufficient for me. However, if I'm doing something a little bit more complex, like actually SSHing into a server and doing more complex things, I'll actually use a dedicated terminal. And my terminal of choice is a terminal called warp. And this is what you're seeing over here. So warp feels a little bit similar to arc in sense of mentality, but it's generally a simple terminal that has a lot of cool functionality that you wouldn't typically see in a terminal. And it just makes my life a little bit easier. Built with Rust, so it's super performant. And it also has AI to make your life a little bit easier. For example, we have the warp drive over here, which is basically a place where you can actually set some workflows, some commands basically to run at any given time. For example, here, I have a command that says kill the process running on a specific port. I can't tell you the amount of times that has happened to me that I have an application running. I close the terminal. I forget to close the application. The application is still running and occupying that port. So I want to kill it, but I always have to Google the command to specifically kill something on a specific port. With this, I no longer have to. I can save it as a workflow. And then it's here, the command LSO and then all of these parameters here, and I can just pass the port. And if I click it, it automatically puts it here. I can just write the port 8000, and then I can do this, and it's going to kill automatically without me having to do any extra work. And then there's a bunch of things, like you have a command over here, like PNPM, it automatically adds autocomplete without having any sort of extra configuration. And then I can press tab, or I can go here and see a visual representation of the commands that I can use. This is easier for me to work with than using a terminal, because I can visually see multiple options. If I select one, I can come back here, I can actually select text and directly delete it inside of here, which is typically harder to do in a terminal. And it's little things like this that just make my life a little bit easier and makes me choose this terminal over some other terminal. And then the last thing that I like is the ability to just create multiple terminals very quickly. So I can press command D over here, I create a split view, I can press command shift D and I create a vertical split view and command D and command shift D is a lot easier for me to remember than remembering some other keyboard combination like you would do in something like Tmux. This just makes more sense. Again, it's less friction, makes it easier for me to be faster. And that's all it takes for me to switch and commit to a terminal. Now let's go back to the browser because we're done with the terminal. And let me talk to you about the six tool that I use. And actually this is really important because I want to show you something and share with you what it's actually like to work as a software developer within a team. So when you join a software development team, you're usually going to follow a framework for working. Most companies will follow something that is called Scrum. Scrum basically is a framework that organizes work into goals, which are completed in time box iterations called sprints. So essentially, this is how a sprint works. So here we have an example sprint, sprint seven. We have me and Ian over here to keep things simple. And before a sprint, as a team, what you're going to do is you're going to sit down, you're going to look at your backlog of tickets. These are all issues that will be in the backlog. And you're going to pick which ones you commit to for this specific sprint. A sprint can last from anywhere from one week to four weeks usually. Then as you work, you progress the tickets, you move them from one column to another. And and the goal is essentially to complete everything that you've committed to for that specific sprint. And then after the sprint is finished, you're usually going to have another meeting called a retro meeting retrospective, where you're going to look at how the sprint went. Did you manage to get everything done? Did you not? And you're going to talk about what things you can do to improve it. And that the next sprint, you actually get everything that you planned done. And that is, in a nutshell, the actual process that you can reasonably expect to be part of when you're actually working within a team as a software developer. And to do all of this, you're usually going to want to use a tool. So here I have a tool called Jira. This is a tool that's specifically built for Scrum, and it also has a lot of other features that makes working with Scrum really easily. Right, so you saw the sprints, you can easily create sprints, you can then easily create issues, move them along, tag people, you can integrate this with GitHub to actually see the status from GitHub. And there's a bunch of other features, right? Jira is a management software that allows you to work easily in a team and follow the scrum process. And you're probably going to use something like this. Now it doesn't have to be Jira, it can be something else, it can be GitHub projects, it can be linear, there's a bunch of other tools out there. But generally, one of these tools you're going to want to use. So it's a good idea to know about these things before getting into it to essentially 
prepare yourself for what you can expect. And finally, the last tool that I'm going to use in my software development work day is a tool called Figma. So over here, we have this to-do folder. I actually have some authentication flow designs that I'm going to have to work on later today. So we can see here, Figma is essentially a whiteboard tool that's very useful and popular for UX designers. So as a software developer, you're usually not going to have to design the work that you do. You're usually going to be given a design like this. Here we have a couple of screens from the UX designer and your job is going to be to implement these screens and bring them to life using code. And for that, you're going to be using Figma, right? So you're going to have this handed to you by your UX designer. Usually you're going to go in here, you're going to see all of these different things and you're going to put this into code. And then if you have questions, you can leave a comment, you can tag your designer, ask them a specific question, they'll get back to you. And your job is essentially once again, to take this, put it into life, write the code for it and actually bring it into the product. Figma is a really popular tool. It has a lot of other features. It also integrates really nicely with some development frameworks. They have like a dev part of Figma as well, which I haven't played around too much with, but I heard it's really cool. So if you want, you can check that out. But generally, again, it makes the general development of the process a lot easier and it makes it simpler to work together as a team and to keep organized. Now, one thing that I also want to mention about Figma and generally the UX designer working process, how you're going to work with them is how Pulpo really nicely integrates with the process. So we have these mockups over here of the work that we have to do. When we actually do the work and we go back here to Slack, right? and we actually have the work, we can actually tag the designer. And if we have this set up in our actions like we do, we can actually get a preview link inside of Slack over here for the work that we did. We created a separate branch, in this case, Ian. It has a preview that's running on a specific URL. We can tag the product owner, the, sorry, the UX designer. We can tag them, send them the preview and ask them to look, is this okay? Is this not okay? Can they give us feedback, right? It nicely integrates because it bridges the gap between a UX designer and a developer, and it makes things a little bit smoother. And speaking of Pulpo, there's actually a new message over here. We have one new commit that was added to users page. So let's go here. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh and let's see the new commit. And we're going to see here if we scroll down that Ian has pushed added users list component. So let's see what he did. Let's go over here. And he created over here, there we go, users list. This is a new component. That's perfect. That's exactly what we asked him to do. And then he imported it here and then used it here, passed it to users. That's great. I'm happy with this. We can now review this. Let's approve submit review. We're going to approve this. This will automatically then going to get also sent to Pulpo as well in Slack. But since this is now approved, we can just merge it and it's going to confirm the merge. And now we're going to merge it. And this pull request is going to be done and we can move on to something else. And now if we go back to Slack, you're going to see that the pull request channel is actually gone. It's been archived automatically by Pulpo. I can actually still see it. If I go here to threads, I can see the threads that I'm in. You're going to see that this one is archived, right? We have here, we have an approval. Hooray. Added user space was just approved. This is great. And it's archived, it's merged. And again, we can move on to something else. Now, Pulpo also has a web app where you can see some additional information. For example, this is their dashboard. I'm currently signed in. And here you can see some actual metrics of how your pull requests are being done. The cycle time, the amount of time from first commit to actually being merged. This really matters in bigger teams when the cycle time is really important. You can see insights and charts on how well your team is doing. And you can use this to actually improve the team velocity and help get your POs merged much faster. And then, the last thing that I'm going to show you is the settings tab over here where you can actually configure Pulpo and set it up exactly how you want. So we have PR channels over here. We've seen those. And these are all of the options that are currently available to us. And we can completely customize this for what suits our team. This again is really useful. If you're interested to charge Pulpo either for yourself or even better suggested to the team they're currently working on, you can find all the details on the first link in the description. Once again, thank you to Pulpo for kindly sponsoring this video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure to leave this video a big thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch a different video of mine that YouTube seems to think that you're really going to enjoy. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Kozlin. This is Kozlin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.